Uh, good evening, teachers. Uh, uh, I will start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do. Twenty. Uh, Mr. N, uh, resident of uh, Noida, here by uh, education businessman by occupation. History given by self. Date of admission was six October two thousand twenty-one, and date of uh, examination was sixteenth October two thousand twenty. The case of chronic kidney disease, stage five, on maintenance hemodialysis, admitted for kidney transplant surgery. Uh, I would like to start from, uh, start my history from July two thousand twenty, before which patient was apparently all right. And one started... second, one second, Ashish. Somehow your voice is breaking in between. Do you have some kind of earphones or something? It may get better. Um, no. Okay. okay. All right. As your face changes the distance, the voice changes. That's okay. where. All right. Uh, ma'am, up. Okay. Better. Better. Uh, ma'am, patients uh, start experiencing easy fatigability, generalized weakness, and low grade fever. Uh, I started experiencing easy fatigability while doing uh, regular work, which was insidious and onset gradually progressive. Uh, Uh, and was associated with generalized weakness he uh, he was ex- started experiencing low grade fever which was in- insidious onset up to 100 degree fahrenheit intermittent uh, one episode in one uh, two to three uh, one to two days there was no history of cough breathlessness uh, burning micturations vomiting loose stools uh, jaundice or weight loss uh, with this complaints uh, he visited Uh, there was no history of headache or burning micturition or oliguria. With this complaint, he visited uh, a local physician who prescribed him uh, some antibiotics, multivitamins, and paracetamol, uh, which he started taking. Uh, uh, although his uh, symptoms uh, didn't relieve completely, but his uh, fever uh, spikes uh, decreased in frequency. Uh, he continued taking uh, paracetamol intermittently for uh, two to three months, where uh, till uh, September two thousand twenty, when he started, when his symptoms aggravated, his uh, fatigability increased, uh, and his uh, fever, the frequency of fever spike increased. Is he started getting fever uh, daily, uh, one spike in mostly in the evening, uh, up to hundred degree Fahrenheit. Mm. Also, he started. He noticed swelling in bilateral lower limb, which was insidious in onset, gradually progressive. Initially, it was up to ankle, but uh, progressively it increased, uh, extend to knee over a period of fifteen to twenty days, and was associated with frothiness of urine, which was present throughout the day. He also noticed there is uh, that his urine output has dipped. Uh, his uh, his pa- he was passing at the time uh, three to four times each time around one hundred fifty to two hundred mL per day. There was no history of blood in urine or burning maturation. No history of orthopnea, PND, uh, breathlessness, oral ulcer, jo- uh, joint pain, rash, and no history of uh, altered sensorium. Uh, Seizures, headache, dizziness. There's no history of abdominal pain, jaundice, uh, blood in stools, uh, vomiting, and loose stools. Uh, so with this complaints, he visited another physician who, uh, at this time, he uh, uh, he advised some uh, investigations, and he remembers that his investigation that hemoglobin was found to be around six gram per deciliter, and his serum creatinine was around eleven. So uh, with this report, he was advised to visit a nephrologist, and he uh, visited a nephrologist and got admitted in a hospital on twenty seventh September, two thousand twenty. Uh, in view of uh, high creatinine, he says uh, he was started. Uh, he was he underwent hemodialysis through a catheter in left groin region. Uh, he was then investigated and was told that. He is leaking you uh, protein and blood from his urine, and I was advised kidney uh, biopsy. He remembers his uh, uh, urine protein creatinine ratio was around twelve gram per uh, gram. Ultrasounds uh, showed uh, normal size kidneys, and ANA and DS DNA was positive. Uh, he received two point PR uh, two points of blood and was uh, he underwent kidney biopsy uh, on. Fourth October two thousand twenty. 
uh, there was no uh, immediate post procedure complications he was told that his kidney biopsy report was suggestive of uh, loop uh, changes in kidneys due to lupus uh, lupus uh, systemic lupus nephritis he was then started on a iv steroids which was he was given for 3 days and was then shifted to oral uh, steroids and uh, mmf uh, which was started at around uh, two tablets uh, three uh, three tablets uh uh twice a day uh, and tablet hcqs and his uh, iv steroids uh hcqs uh, ma'am he continued taking this tablet hcqs uh and he was discharged after four, uh, five days of admission on five days on 9th october 2020 uh he continued taking tablet hcqs tablet uh mycophenolate mofetil tablet omnacortin uh and uh, was doing con- uh, regular Im- uh, maintenance hemodialysis uh in november 2020 uh, in uh, last month of october he uh, left av fish uh, radiocephalic av fistula was created on uh, day care basis uh over a period of next 2 3 months uh, he was taking a uh, these medicines although his urine crea- uh, his urine output didn't improve and uh, his uh, 24 hour urine crea- uh, protein was done in uh, Dece- uh, january which was uh, found uh, which he remembers to be 6 g per day he was then shifted to uh, from uh, M- uh, mycophenolate mofetil to iv cyclophosphamide which he received every two weekly uh, total of six doses so one It's, second uh, one second ashish yes. the, we need some time frame so whenever he was diagnosed 4th october 2020 yes, he uh, it, took mmf steroids for 2 3 months yes. correct uh, yeah, and man. thereafter yes. no improvement he continues to be dialysis dependent gets iv yes. cyclophosphamide yes ma'am correct yes ma'am okay all right uh, his extra manifestations like uh, 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 generalized weakness fatigability and uh, low grade fever subsided uh, his urine uh, pc ratio continues uh, to be on a higher side however he noticed that uh, his urine output decreased further to around 2 to 300 mg per ml per day uh, in june 2020 uh, 21 patient experience uh, say that started. again when when in 21 june ma'am june june 2020 now you have jumped to june right Ma- so we were here one second time frame so somewhere 4th october 20 he starts on treatment 3 months october november december is finished now yes ma'am okay december he gets let's say december jan let's put it as jan 21 he gets cyclophosphamide no ma'am methyl right. how many doses ma'am uh, he got uh, is it say Ma'am, initially he got uh, MMF for three months. Yeah, yeah, Ma'am, MMF steroids three months. Yes, he ma'am. continues okay. on dialysis for three months. Yes, ma'am. So and three four- months later, he gets cyclophosphamide. Yes. That's what you said. So now it becomes January, roughly. January to uh, mid uh, initial part of April. January to April. How many yes. doses of cyclophosphamide? Every two weekly. Every two. So six doses of cyclophosphamide. okay all right okay yes, after that uh, he was on uh, taking regular medicines and uh, till june 2021 when he started experiencing breathlessness which was gradually in onset more on mm-hmm. exertion uh reduced by rest uh, it was associated with cough with expectoration which was white in color there was no diurnal variation or postural variation cough uh was relieved with cough med- uh, cough uh, syrup there was no complaint of orthopnea pnd chest pain fever uh at this time uh he got admitted with this complaints in a hospital in june 2021 uh okay. he was is uh, is having infection in the lung and was started on iv antibiotics he was given iv antibiotics for around 5 days and as his symptoms subsided he was then discharged uh on oral antibiotics okay this was in june man after mm-hmm. that on regular medicines uh till uh, 
for the next three four months, he was undergoing regular hemodialysis, taking tablet HCQs and all. Uh, and uh, along the same time, he was being evaluated for kidney transplant surgery. Uh, he got admitted on uh, in uh, our hospital on sixth October two thousand twenty-one for kidney transplant surgery. Right. Uh, so th at this time there was no history of fever, cough, chest pain, breathlessness, or any joint pain, uh, burning mixturation, vomiting, or loose stool. He was mm -hmm. started on tap tacrolimus and uh, MMF two uh, two tap BD uh, and uh, on day minus two, patient underwent kidney transplant surgery on eighth October two thousand twenty one. Mm -hmm. uh, he remembers that uh, one uh, injection was given, a costly injection was given on the morning of the transplant surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, after uh, there was, after post surgery, he started passing good amount of urine. His creatinine mm -hmm. started decrease, showed a decreasing trend. He was uh, started on liquid diet on post op day two and uh, normal diet on post op day three. Uh, his uh, yeah, urinary catheter was removed on post op day five. Uh, his serum creatinine decreased to 1.1 on post of day 5. Uh, the duration of hospitalization and he was discharged. Uh, I examined him on post of day 8 and his mm -hmm. the hospitalization period post uh, transplant surgery was uneventful. Right. Finished. Uh, Ma'am, this was the history. Then mm -hmm. I will go past history. Okay. Why don't you complete the history? Then we'll talk yes. about diagnosis. Um, no history of uh, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, or uh, past history of any kidney tuberculosis. In the tuberculosis, COVID and COVID, the uh, COVID vaccination was done in uh, May and uh, June. Uh, then uh, personal history: uh, bowel, uh, bowel is normal. Uh, then uh, sleep appetite is normal. Family history: uh, he is a single child born to non consanguineous marriage. There is no history of uh, diabetes, hypertension, kidney disease, or uh, heart disease in the family. All right. So, uh, all right. Is there a specific reason that you have chosen to present this case? No. Okay. Okay, fair enough. One has to present something. Okay, let's get to... So, what's your tentative diagnosis now? Uh, Ma'am, uh, renal allograft recipient. Mm -hmm. uh, basic disease being chronic glomerular nephritis, mm -hmm. uh, lupus nephritis, donor mm -hmm. being ABO compatible with mm -hmm. function and secondary uh, hypertension. Secondary? Hypertension. ABO compatible donor and? You said something after that which I missed. A uh, stable graft function. Stable graft function. Okay. Anything else anyone will like to add or you would like to add? Any differentials you want to give? Uh, this task. Okay. All right. Can you summarize this history? It's a long story, which I got tired of writing. So, 29, a summary. 29 male patient with uh, no previous comorbidities, complaint mm -hmm. of easy fatigability, intermittent low grade fever, uh, and uh, uh, generalized weakness. I was evaluated for, for the same, uh, uh, which uh, and uh, followed by uh, bilateral lower limb swelling and frothiness of urine being evaluated for the same. Uh, he underwent kidney biopsy on uh, 4th October 2020. Uh, his kidney biopsy report, uh, he was being told to be lupus nephritis. He, he received um, uh, IV uh, methylprednisolone on three doses followed by uh, oral uh, steroid and uh, methyl uh, MMF for three months followed by uh, IV cyclophosphamides from Jan to uh, April, six doses. Uh, uh, I had episodes of uh, pneumonia in June 2021 and admitted uh, underwent uh, kidney transplant surgery on 8th October 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
so examination uh ma'am uh, so no differentials then at this point or before uh, at the first anytime, time any time patient is yours and also in its uh, systemic vasculitis could be but at that time but after the biopsy and all the treatment i would like to keep it as Okay, then have the have the guts to say no differential. <laughs> as simple as that. Okay, so did you have access to this biopsy report, uh, either physical slides or at least a written report from a reasonable center? Uh, ma'am, at that time, but after that, he sent me the report. No, no. Now you have taken the. Yeah. Not at that time. You have taken the history on sixteenth October post transplant. Oh yeah, right. yeah. The biopsy report, ma'am. You have seen the biopsy report, okay. right? And yes. the biopsy. We'll talk about the biopsy details, but the biopsy is conclusive of lupus yes. by whatever yes. standard. Then you should have the guts to say no. Yes. The diagnosis. Super. Be confident and say no. The diagnosis. And this time, if you didn't have access to biopsy report, okay. all right so what would be okay let's finish the physical examination also when patient was comfortable lying so in supine position conscious oriented to time place mm-hmm. for it's a uh, weight was 74 uh, weight is 57 height is 174 cm bmi been 18.9 pulse was 82 per minute uh, in right radial pulse regular normal in volume uh, no radio radio femoral delay uh, bp was uh, uh, 130 by 80 in right uh, uh, upper limb and 130 by 80 in left lower limb uh, and uh, left 130 by 86 in right lower limb and left lower limb uh, left radio cephalic av fistula uh, is present in uh, le- is present thrill uh, thrill present Temperature was normal. Uh, RR was 18 per minute. There was pallor present. No edema, lymphadenopathy, extra sinuses. JVP is not red. Skin hair normal. Uh, then systemic examination. There is no specific. Research. I will continue. Shall I continue? Yeah, no yeah, yeah. Finish the examination. Whatever you have to do. Then uh, CVS examination and his inspection. Uh, Just a second. Uh, bilateral is uh, chest is bilateral symmetrical. No scar sinuses. Uh, venous. Whatever problem. is normal, system is normal. You can just say it's normal. Normal. So all the all okay. systems are normal. Except for abdominal examination, uh, where he has a scar on uh, inspection. He has a scar on right iliac fossa. Uh, mm-hmm. On uh, exam on palpation, he has mild tenderness over it, and uh, graft is felt. And uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, let's go back to let's say, Jitendra, you want to ask him anything? Well, not I very. I am. I was not very impressed with the way history was presented. Yeah, I the know. I was going. <laughs> correct. <laughs> tell him. Tell him. Event is not to translate the local dialect into English. You know. Correct. You have to summarize uh, like a doctor. You know. So, if you have seen the biopsy report, I think the better summary would have been that there was a biopsy proven lupus nephritis, and then have to define whether it was uh, what was the, your summary of the treatment. Given MMF, then given cyclophosphamide, whether he was a resistant or responder or partial responder, and whether the transplant was done after the waiting period was optimal. So you can just summarize that a biopsy proven lupus nephritis, <clears throat> and uh, uh, who was given treatment? It was resistant, and finally end up with kidney transplant. So actually, I was not very clear that what thing you are highlighting. Whether the story before the transplant or the story after the transplant, your uh, what was that unique in this case? I don't know. So we were uh, getting lost uh, in the long story, ma'am. If you can add something. Yeah. So uh, Ashish, I think what Dr. Jitendra has said is precisely that's why I asked you. Was there a specific point why you present? Uh, why you are presenting this case? so in a long story there is usually either a pre transplant story or a post transplant story that you may like to highlight 
and the other one you can kind of relatively cut short. Okay. Now the problem with your history is, uh, I wish, as uh, Dr. Jitendra also said, you kind of shortened it. Uh, let me give you a few examples. So here is a guy who presents with constitutional symptoms like fever, malaise, fatigue, and you said weakness, and he has fever. He goes to a doctor, is given some paracetamol for three months. Maybe right. he... yes, no, no, uh, I agree he got it. All right, then you need to focus three months of fever. I think your autoimmune uh, tentacles should start. And then add verbatim, like this guy now develops symptoms of kidney disease somewhere down the road, pedal edema, frothy urine, decreased urine output. And he is in advanced renal failure now. All right. So this was somewhere in September 20. Yes. All right. And he, is, he has started on dialysis. All right. The patient now may keep repeating his protein creatinine ratio but anybody who's dialysis dependent now, right? So from September 20 to October 21, this guy is dialysis dependent. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Still, you are talking about protein creatinine ratio. So signs of recovery in this patient glaringly would be recovery of kidney yeah. function, function, not proteinuria, not proteinuria. Yeah. We would have talked about proteinuria if he had some kidney function. The guy is dialysis dependent. Obviously, there is no kidney recovery on the face of it. This is what Dr. Jitendra is trying to tell you. We need to process these histories in our head as a doctor, as a nephrologist. And now, if I were you, I would no longer talk about protein creatinine ratio. I would say this man was given pulses of steroids followed by oral steroids and mycophenolate for three months, still continues to be dialysis dependent. If you were the treating doctor that time, let's say, which is now October to January 1, let's assume, what would you have done? So I would give you a time frame. Look, now this is all past and we need to kind of review what was done to this poor guy. Was it right, wrong, right? And we can at least learn from others' experience, correct? Because we didn't come across this guy then. So October, he started on treatment. When would you like to review your treatment now? Okay. He is on steroids and MMF fall, uh, preceded by pulses of steroids. When will you like to review his treatment? At what time frame? Okay. Post biopsy. After around six months. Six months. So six months. So okay. get... If a kidney, let's say, whatever the biopsy may be, if a kidney has to recover, somebody who's dialysis dependent, how long will it take to recover? Tell me. Recover three months. Three huh? months. Will you wait for three to six months? To three to six months? Wait for what? To uh, look for remission. Uh, to look so for remission. All I right. Let's let's review that biopsy report then. You have the biopsy report with you? Mm, it's in mobile. Uh, I will... Okay, read it out. Let's find out reasons. Okay. Ma'am, I can tell you. Yes. Uh, okay, let's hear it. Uh, 32 glomeruli. Okay. 2% were uh, sclerosed. One second again, just say it again. Uh, ma 30 32 gloms. gloms. Yeah, how many sclerosed? And uh, 60 per 62 percent. Around 60 percent. 62 yeah. is very precise, but I'll call it 60 percent gone. Yeah. Okay, we're showing uh proliferative glomerular nephritis. Okay, glomerulitis. Uh, uh -huh. six were showing uh fibrous uh. Fibro fibrocellular crescents. Okay. Uh, interstitial in the fibrosis was of uh, fifty percent. Ifta was in fifty percent. Ifta fifty percent. All right. All right. Anything else? Vascular changes. 
structural changes bend the road of three the main components of the kidney gloms gloms uh, tubular interstitium and vascular changes so no specific vascular changes okay uh, i remembered something so in all this long story you haven't talked about hypertension at all well uh, initially you started on anti hypertension so he was found to be hypertensive did i miss it or you miss it actually i missed did it either, who missed it i have missed <laughs> by really. so you missed it ashish bhai kuch yeah i be, missed it be with the case yaar okay so you missed hypertension completely out of a nephrology case i uh, it will never get forgiven yaar please I get back told it was found to be uh, 150 by 96 bp was oh. found to be to okay. start medication so if you say somebody's blood pressure as 150 by 96 then on it treatment was... without treatment if yeah, it's without... on treatment you say on treatment if you know the treatment even better on three drugs i don't need the doses right or nobody needs the doses at least you can say on two drugs three drugs four drugs right the severity of hypertension is indicated to everyone then right so keep that in mind this history as dr jitendra has said in very straight words was kind of not great but anyway so ma'am coming back to your comment i think if there is isolated nephrotic syndrome then we will look at the protein creatinine ratio or proteinuria if kidney failure is moderate maybe 2 or 3 creatinine then we will look at the stabilization but i think one thing should be clear to the ashish that if the patient is dialysis dependent i'm i'm coming to that yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay so ashish uh, back to this kidney biopsy right so what do you expect from this kidney biopsy once i read the biopsy i have no hopes of this kidney recovering so how do you interpret such a kidney biopsy ashish chronic ma'am it's a chronic as if ta is more than 50 okay uh, Are there, is there someone else who wants to contribute to this? Ashish wants to wait for six months no. for this guy to recover on immunosuppression. I can pick up a I can pick up an odd name from the, here. Most our videos are off. Ashish Jitendra, Satish Chaudhary. I mean, this is a random name that I picked up. Unmute yourself, please. Hello, ma'am. Hello. So yes, Satish, good evening, ma'am. Good yes, evening. Chalo, video to on kar do, bhai. Um, okay, if you don't want to do it. No, no, ma'am. Okay, you can talk at least, right? Yeah, ma'am. Okay, so, uh, so with this kidney biopsy report, which was done in on uh, October twenty, how much would you wait for after you start him on treatment? Ma'am, uh, minimum six months. and we'll monitor with the 24 hour fluid urine protein and uh, somebody who is dialysis dependent oh sorry ma'am i think somebody who is dialysis six, dependent no ma'am no six months actually six i missed months. the yeah you missed the dialysis dependent did you join late yes ma'am okay, okay someone minutes. else can answer it seems the janta wants to wait for six months on this heavy immunosuppression i'm i'm surprised this guy is alive Anybody else? Otherwise, I'll switch back to Ashish. Okay, Ashish. So, somebody who's dialysis dependent, on the face of it, this kidney is if ta of fifty percent, sixty percent of the gloms sclerosed. Whatever gloms are alive are fibrocellular. I would not have any hopes from this guy that this kidney will recover. right so i would at best give him a little steroid 6 weeks would be my kind of time frame if the patient is not convinced that this kidney is not going to recover you can repeat a biopsy at 6 months but this kidney has so much of chronicity how do you look at a lupus biopsy you look at activity you look at chronicity where is the activity in this Well, it was showing activity index. It was the activity index score was around eight. 
Okay, but and the chronicity score? The index was around uh, six, six, uh, eight. Don't forget. देखो भूल जाओ इन स्कोर्स को भूल जाओ दे आर फॉर पैथोलॉजिस्ट टू ऑब्जेक्टिवाइज थिंग्स दे आर फॉर कंपेयरिंग वेरियस बायोपीज इन स्टडी राइट बट दैट इज वाई वी पीपल वॉन्ट वन अ विजुअल इंप्रेशन ऑफ द बायोपसी शॉर्ट ऑफ दैट वी वॉन्ट टू रीड द डिटेल्ड डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द बायोपसी सो अकॉर्डिंग टू वट डिस्क्रिप्शन यू हैव टोल्ड मी इट्स इट्स अ फ्राइड किडनी आई मीन आई वुड कॉल इट अ गॉन किडनी All right. At best, maybe you can get him dialysis free for a couple of months. Hopefully, that would be very, very wishful thinking. All right. So to think that you would give him six months or a year of immunosuppression is a ridiculous idea. Now, yes. what you will achieve—that's why I'm saying this guy is lucky to be alive. That's is the... go ahead. The first immunosuppression for three months, and then I would not have given another first time. छह महीने से आप तीन महीने तो आ गए कम से कम गुड थिंग आशीष बिकॉज वॉज एक्टिविटी इन इन द बायोपसी वॉज शोइंग सम एक्टिविटी सो इंडक्शन इट वॉज रिक्वायर्ड दे सेट की एक्टिविटी नाउ वट वुड बी योर इंडिकेटर्स ऑफ रिकवरी मैम इंडिकेटर विड बी हैव एनी एक्स्ट्रा रीनल यूपस मैम यही no extra renal manifestation in the sense of generalized weakness fatigability Fatigue, that's all that, gone now that, so those were very general that, symptoms that, it's not that, that he had a big rash joint no, pain pericarditis no. pneumonitis cerebritis nothing of no. that sort so no major other organ involvement besides the kidney right yes. okay so constitutional symptoms are not called extra renal just a bit okay so how much do you want to treat him So that as he was having some activity it's i would have given a first initial immunosuppression for 3 months and then i would not have switched to another first line immunosuppression uh first line uh, like cyclophosphamide okay chalo i would be even shorter on him okay and no way so the recovery would be monitored by here output recovery uh, in urine output recovery in kidney function functions on dialysis Dialysis. His dialysis need, so the first thing would be that he becomes off dialysis. Off dialysis. Even, okay. Let's let's assume for a second that he became dialysis free. Where do you think his best recovery would be? What level of creatinine? Where do you imagine he would settle with this kind of a biopsy? Only stage five only, man. Off dialysis. Stage five only. Okay, so he will have a GFR even then less than fifteen, according to you. Then why do you wait? Want to wait for three months? I would be done in six weeks on this guy. I fully agree with that. I'm in fact, uh, uh, in such patients, constitutional symptoms improve when the patient is dialysis dependent. Number two, one tip on kidney biopsy is that if you get too many glomerulus, that means the kidney is small and glomerulus is crowded. Getting thirty-four glomerulus in one shot itself shows that uh, kidney was lot of scarred, and sixty-two percent of kidney was gone at the time of biopsy. So in this particular patient, the only single thing which should be monitored is the urine output, and if the output improves and patient become dialysis free, then there is a point. But there is no point monitoring protein creatinine ratio in such patients, and I won't go for wait for more than a month or so. and uh, if kidney dialysis dependent patient recovering beyond a month i don't think is feasible in such kind of cases plus you have to understand that ultimately these patients will progress to esrd they yeah. will undergo transplant they will have now another 10 to 20, 20 years on immunosuppression so now your aim is to optimize immunosuppression otherwise the cumulative toxicity at the end of two decades will be enormous and imagine all those complications after two decades or so so ultimately you are not able to prevent transplant in this case at at most you would be able to postpone it for a couple of months and for that keep giving immunosuppression will not be a wise idea uh, dr maji ma'am if you can answer okay so ashish let me ask you a few things now let's say you have to so uh he was on 2.5 grams of mmf a day right, right. ashish initially initially 
Yes, sir. So, uh, sir. what happens to toxicity of all the immunosuppressives with somebody who's dialysis dependent? And toxicity increases also. Toxicity increases. So again, so the longer you continue on such what? immunosuppression, yes. although the MMF, I know, uh, or rather, you know, it's not going through the kidney, but even then, with renal failure, toxicity of yes. any drug gets more. You agree with that? Yes, Especially sir. immunosuppression. So if you had to give him cyclophosphamide, let's say, for whatever reason, how would you adjust the dose? And he got loads of doses of cyclophosphamide, right? Yes, so sir. how would you try to adjust the dose in such a person? Let's say you have to give it for pericarditis. You had to immunosuppress him. Yes. Let's assume he got pericarditis and you had to give it. And the dose what? of cyclophosphamide is 15 mg per kg. Mm -hmm. uh, we reduced it. Uh, if, if the patient uh, is stage 5, Less than GFR is less than 15. We reduced it by 2.5 mg per kg. And uh, as per the age, if the patient age is more than 65, we further reduce it by 2.5 mg per kg. So 15 milligram per kg, you would make it 12.5 milligram per kg. The reduction is much more. I don't do hisab kitab, but I would reduce it to half in somebody who is end-stage kidney disease. Okay. Jitender, you have a point here? I would reduce it much. 2.5 is nothing. Right? A reduction of 2.5 out of 15, according to me, is nothing. You're giving the same dose. Go and read up the doses. The reduction is much more. It will be one third to one half in somebody who's in, again, the same philosophy. Cyclophosphamide is not excreted by the kidney, but even then, the toxicity becomes more. Same applies to MMF. Same applies to TAC also. Okay, the toxicity of every RAM drug will increase. As Dr. Jitendra said, it's long-term immunosuppression. Once given, it's not going to get out of your body. Just think back about my statement. This guy is lucky to be alive after so much immunosuppression. I thought he was going to die of this pneumonia. But anyway, he lived through. So. Okay, so yes. you should not immunosuppress people when you have no hopes of the kidney recovering. Yes. Six but months is too long, right? So just, just yes, sir. Okay, you want to yes. say something? Go ahead. And then the, I would have given him on uh, with MMF for three months, then I would have kept him on as the recovery was there, I would have kept him low. Though. Steroids only. I would not have tried for Recover hone to do. Recovery hai kaha. So that's why I'm asking you, what is your measure of recovery? You should be very clear when you follow up a patient. That's like recovery and your voice has gone. Uh, low dose steroids only. That's okay. Okay, low. that I can still accept. Low dose steroids, I can still accept. But you must have a clear head as to what you need to follow up in a patient, what you need to follow up with. Okay. So that is why. So I would not have talked about these protein creatinine ratios at all. I would have followed. The okay. guy is still dialysis dependent. All right. All right. So next he comes for a transplant. Yeah. What specific things you would think about in a patient who has end stage kidney disease because of lupus? And any special things in transplant that you would like to kind of think about? Uh, and, uh, extra renal uh, activity. Then, uh, that he doesn't have. No renal activity, no extra renal activity. Antibodies. Say that again? Antiphospholipid antibodies. Okay, that's something you could look at. Okay, that's one. What else? serological activity but it has yeah twice. you can see that what happens to lupus activity when patients go into end stage kidney disease as the patient is on dialysis the activity decreases uh, over a period of time all right burn, burn out disease the disease okay correct so, so because re why does it die down 
Why does it die down? Why does the lupus activity die down? छत पे कुछ लिखा है क्या नहीं मैं फैंडोट अच्छा नहीं मैं तो ऊपर कहाँ देख रहे हो नीचे आ जाओ हाँ so what was I asking हाँ why does it because chronic kidney disease is an is an immunosuppressant right simple answer there is no bigger immunosuppression than chronic kidney disease itself Ashish Hello, Ashish yes, has vanished. Okay, you are still there. It's somebody else's screen which has come, I think. Okay. So, what else? Anything else that may trouble you when you work these people up for transplant? Hello, Ashish. Are you around? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh -uh. Okay, you are back now. So anything, anything which may trouble you when you work this person for transplant? And it's something to do with cross matches. So these patients have what? Autoantibodies. Right. Yes, ma'am. Right? And at times your CDCs would come as positive. Largely because there is an auto cross match which is positive. And you may get trapped in that. Okay, so that's something you need to keep in your head. If you get a positive report, think about it. That it must be an auto thing rather than Actually. the other person. Okay. And when you talked about this, the KTP story, you, this is a live donor transplant, right? Correct? This is a live donor transplant done in your hospital. You have taken the history on post-op day eight. You didn't talk about the donor at all. So when you present the transplant story, so one is pre-transplant workup. So that's how you divide the transplant into two, three areas. Pre-transplant workup, transplant and post-transplant. Post-transplant, recovery is fine. But pre-transplant, you need to talk about medical workup, immunological workup, the donor. I didn't hear who the donor is. Sir, we were uh, no. same uh, O to O and uh, her age was 52 years. No, no, all that is fine, but it needs to come out from you when you go for an exam or when you present a case, there is a certain method in which a case is presented. So certain normal things must come in that. All right. So when you're talking about a live donation in your own hospital or any hospital for that matter, you need to talk who the donor was, donor mother, 50 years of age, compatibility, right? ABO compatible, immunological workup, what kind of cross matches, CDC, flow, DSA, F done. You need to talk about that, right? Whatever so, the patient can tell you, agree. But you, I'm sure the patient knew who the donor is, the yes. age group. If you know the GFRs of the donor, that also comes in between, right? So you must, why is my internet bothering me? Is it my internet? From the, uh, yeah, because the patient was not aware of the cross match. Uh, not aware of the DSS report and all. No, no. Then you say it. Then you say it. Patient was aware who the donor is, right? Uh, who the that is. also was not part of your history, Ashish. Okay. All right. Jitendra, any other ideas? Do you... Uh, one uh, hypothetical question, although I think there is a controversy on that. Let's say this person came to you in January, this is October now, in January, when he had had three months of immunosuppression, he had not recovered and he wanted a transplant, right? So yes. would you like to wait or do a transplant then? And there is a controversy. Ki, uh, there, okay. is, there is a question period of six months should be required. And mm -hmm. there is the fact that some people would prefer for a preemptive transplant. 
with the patient extra renal you know, manifestation allowed for the uh, allowed no no for... there are two different things look some people might think that lupus is an autoimmune disease it may come back we need to wait like ntgbm disease is the typical example where you like to wait so what's your hospital's philosophy and uh, lupus do they wait they wait for 6 months not they wait for 6 months okay i mean i don't like to wait i mean 3 months i would have done this guy right so there is a little controversy okay so that's what i meant by waiting time all right there are certain diseases for which it's recommended that you wait but lupus there is no clear because as we said the lupus activity dies down once one develops renal failure right not only uh, this the recurrence but that question is to us is what is the recurrence rate of lupus after kidney transplant around 2 to 10% it's quite low it's quite low so that is what madam is saying that lupus activity dies down chances of recurrence are less once the patient dialysis dependent then systemic symptoms are not there so there may not be a point in waiting so much uh, before you plan for kidney transplant that's the controversy some people uh, some study say uh, some says ki we should go for kidney to transplant if uh, extra renal uh, manifestation allows for it and some says the patient period of 6 months is required so there is no, no 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 one second what do you understand by preemptive kidney transplant and as the patient is uh, at no at the start if the patient is on uh, kidney is not improving his urine output is gradually improving so at the start of the dialysis only a uh, patient can undergo kidney transplantation that is what i read ma'am no no dekho preemptive transplant kuch aur hota hai confusing ma'am as is ha that's what i'm trying the case been suppose the case had come to you about a year earlier and creatinine was 3 or 4 and your chronicity was similar to what you had seen and patient was not dialysis dependent and you had started immunosuppression then there i agree you might have waited for 5 or 6 months the symptoms have subsided but the madam is asking that if the case had come to you this year january march already patient has been dialysis dependent for 3 months then your strategy would be different as compared to a patient who is following you at a level of creatinine maybe a stage 4 or 3 so those two are totally two different cases so waiting policy would be wise if the patient has come to you at a stage 3 or 4 or maybe earlier but definitely not in a dialysis dependent patient uh, i think uh, i i want to ask him his understanding of preemptive transplant will you define pre what is a preemptive transplant ashish the dialysis or starting of dialysis no? that's Maybe. not really preemptive so preemptive is you are following somebody through let's say stage 3 4 and he's about to reach 5 so anybody with a we are not talking about dialysis dependent person now okay so you are stage 4 you have a gfr of 20 you are anyway expected to reach 15 and you have a living related donor instead of waiting until this guy reaches 15 or become symptomatic you can do a preemptive transplant okay when you are analyzing data on preemptive transplant plant you at times include one or two dialysis also patient who has had one or two dialysis also that is because let's say we are somebody with a 7 8 creatinine we are kind of uh anticipating a transplant everything is ready the donor is ready recipient is ready right he may or may not be very symptomatic so eight creatinine you will need to dialyze him maybe before transplant right and or otherwise also you start dialysis and two dialysis you do a transplant so when you are kind of compiling data maybe you include those patients who have had 15 days of dialysis only as a preemptive but in a way preemptive transplant is you are following up somebody you are anticipating this guy becomes stage 5 will need a transplant you have a live related donor before he is put on dialysis or before he begins dialysis 
you start him on, you give him a transplant. So that is what preemptive transplantation means. Okay. But in the context of lupus, you can't transplant a stage three in any case for whatever disease. You are not transplanting stage three. The GFR has to be at least less than 20 when you transplant by any imagination. No program will entertain yeah. above that. Okay. So when I asked you that question, preemptive was nowhere there. Preemptive is a different ball game. So what I was trying to ask you was, I think I've also forgotten by now, was entirely different. Okay. So uh, what else can we ask him? Any, any other student who wants to pitch something, please do so. Anyone else wants to pitch in? Dr. Kane Singh is logged in. You want to comment, Dr. Singh? Nobody wants to say anything. Too bad. All right. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, can I can yeah, I say ask something? something. Ah, please, ask something. I don't know the detail about this patient. Is I can the, give you a two-minute summary if you want. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so this is a 29-year... Uh, Ashish, here is a mock -up for you how to learn, how to summarize. Okay, so this is a 29-year-old fellow, male, who had some constitutional symptoms like fatigue, weakness, etc., had a little fever, went around physician to physician for two, three months. Then he started getting kidney symptoms in form of fluid retention, got pedal edema, decreased urine output, became breathless, got tested, found to have a hemoglobin of 6, creatinine of 11, protein-creatinine ratio of 12 and normal-sized kidneys. Started on dialysis, biopsied, biopsy was lupus nephritis, by which I assume it was a full house IV, I, uh, IF. 32 gloms, 60% sclerosed, proliferative and rest of the glom 6, fibrocellular crescents, 50% EFTA. This was happening in, this was October 20. He was mm -hmm. put on IV methyl pulses, given MMF steroids for three months, no response, continues to be dialysis dependent, given some six doses of IV cyclophosphamide, another three months, gets admitted in June 21 now with a pneumonia, treated, fortunate to have survived that. And October 21, which is four months after pneumonia, he gets admitted them with for a kidney transplant. Okay. And main uh, whole period he was on maintenance dialysis. All the... this while for almost a year, precisely from 27th September 20 to October 21, he's on dialysis. Most probably though he was having advanced. So repeat second biopsy was not done. No, no. no. So ideally to, he, he has to go for the transplantation. No, I no, think transplant to ho gaya na. Admitted for KTP now. KTP ho gaya. Ab to ho gaya transplant. Meto, one can go ahead for KTP, ma'am, if he's not responding uh, uh, endoxon, yeah. six doses of pulses and all these things. No, no, so no, 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 so, kisi ki ye wali biopsy te kitne din recovery ka inzar karoge on immunosuppression. That's where we started. Madam, All right. I, so, I think my suggestion is, hmm. my suggestion is in this patient, what I would have done, I would have waited for uh, minimum three to six months. And if it is better to do the second biopsy before taking the, taking the decision for the transplantation. Because we have seen so many patients we are having in dialysis and after this type of patient, there are very high chances they get dialysis free. Even 10, 15 ml GFR, you will get better. Patient will have pick up urine output in other six, seven months. We can postpone. I am having two, three patients up, especially no, no. lupus Dr. nephritis. Here, we have a kidney biopsy, which has given a very high chronicity. Yeah, I agree. I think I went very fast with this summary. So this is a high degree of chronicity. 
So such a kidney, according to me, is very unlikely to recover. Yeah, I agree, man. I would not wait for definitely not more than three months. I would probably six weeks. I'll start cutting back on immunosuppression. Six weeks. Because if I said six months, it was wrong. I agree. So because immunosuppression has its own issues, we don't want to kill the patient. To save his no, kidneys. No, no, I agree. Majority of the patients, they, they have to respond within a three month of immunosuppression. Exactly. So if, they, yeah. if he had to respond, he would have responded. And here is a completely chronic kidney. I think all these young fellows need to understand where to draw a line. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So decayed recovery in renal failure is seen. There are a few good examples such as uh, AKI secondary to. Uh, mm. MCD and hypervolemia, that takes a little longer period of to recover. Mm. Uh, kidney failure secondary to malignant hypertension also takes a little longer period. Such kind of biopsy proven lupus nephritis who had become dialysis dependent way back in October, uh, already received three months of MMF without any response. And then cyclophosphamide was also started. Chances of recovery of renal function are definitely very remote, especially with the history of very poor uh, urine order. Uh, yes, I agree, Jitain. At least three months you have to wait, I think, for such type of the transplant. You... That, that's the controversy we talked about, yeah. uh, Dr. Singh. So okay, some of us would like to wait more, some of us would like to wait less, right? And uh, somebody did reply cross-match positive and autoantibodies. So I do acknowledge that. So uh, tell me, uh, Ashish, you were talking about recurrence of 2 to 10%, right? So what kind of recurrence you are talking about? Recurrence uh, in the, uh, is usually less severe. It's same in the usually of type 1 or type 2, uh, 1 or class 2. Oh. It is less severe than the... Oh, I was wondering what is type 1 recurrence and what's type 2 recurrence. I have never heard of this terminology. It mostly means mesangial proliferative or minimal mesangial. No. So whenever you talk about recurrence of any disease, there are two things you need to think about. Okay. I mean, these are pertinent clinical points. So first is, is are we talking about histological recurrence? Are we talking about recurrence? leading to renal disease. All right, so when you talked about 2 to 10%, what did you mean? Uh, because... Clinical only parts, uh, Clinical 2 to 10% is very high. One hasn't seen that much of recurrence in lupus. I have actually haven't heard much. So even if you have read these figures, figures somewhere, it must be histological recurrence. So it's like you do a protocol biopsy, you do biopsy for another reason like rejection or whatever graft dysfunction, and you find some immunofluorescence there, which is pan-immunofluorescence or little mesangial hypercellularity, if that's what you are talking about. So two to 10 must be histological, if at all it's there. For practical purposes, recurrence in SLE to lead to clinical kidney disease is extremely rare. The problem with such thought processes, look, you convey it to the patient, 10% recurrence ho jayega. But you need to be clear what recurrence we are talking about. IgA nephropathy, for example. Okay, so how, do, how much do you think is the recurrence in kidney in IgA nephropathy? Wild guess. Again, okay. you have to differentiate kidney disease, recurrence causing kidney disease versus recurrence causing just histological changes. Histological changes, recurrence and IgA is very common. Maybe to the tune of 40, 50, maybe. I don't know the figure. I can't remember these figures which have no meaning in life. Right? But it may be extremely high. Okay. Muted. Jitendra, you are uh, muted. Okay. I was saying that in IgA, the histological recurrence is as high as 40 to 50%. Not a bad guess. I made that guess. Less than 20%. Exactly. So, kidney disease caused by recurrence of IgA nephropathy is relatively rare. And which patients are more prone to getting, uh, let's say, 
uh, IgA recurrence in the kidney and which leads to disease also, which leads to graft dysfunction and IgA nephropathy. Who is kind of more prone to it or what are the risk factors? Ashish, this is meant for you. Or anyone else in the audience? In the... Native kidney has IgA. Yeah, so, yeah. That's when the recurrence can be classified as a recurrence. So, if we don't know the native biopsy, we can not call the recurrence as a recurrence or recurrence. Okay, so those patients who kind of have a rapidly progressive course like crescentic IgA, those are the ones they are more likely to recur in the kidney and lead to kidney disease. But as Dr. Jitender said, a large portion of patients will have histological recurrence, right? So you should always think whenever you read recurrence, whenever you quote recurrence to patients, you must talk about two different entities. While we are talking about recurrence, how many years does it take? Or let's say, how about diabetic nephropathy? Uh, what yeah. kind of recurrence do we talk about? Some A patient comes to you with diabetic nephropathy, gets a transplant. He wants to know, I'm still a diabetic. Will this disease happen in my new kidney? It's a pertinent question. Yeah. Yeah. So what reply will you give him? Yes, it can happen. It can happen then. My kidney transplant kyun karam fir? Pagalu. Bata. Think I'm the patient. I'm recurrent. It takes on uh, this prime. It will take uh, years to uh, occur. Uh, approximately how many years? 15, 10 to 15 to 20 years. Where does this figure come from? Like native kidney. What do you mean native kidney? Diabetes in native kidney. Type 2 diabetes. What you see is type 2 DM, right? And a lot a lot of patients have it at presentation. Well, because they are not aware. It's more uh, established in type 1 diabetes. Good. Okay. Okay. So this, this figure basically comes from type 1 diabetes because it takes 10 years for a type 1 diabetic to develop kidney disease. So now this new kidney is like a good kidney in a type 1 diabetic. So it may take 10 to 15 years for him to develop the new di effective diabetic kidney disease. Okay, so you tell him it takes, if at all it comes, first it may... It will not come if you control your diabetes. If it comes, it will take 15 years. Transplant ki life, 15 saal mil jaye to aur kya chahiye? Theke na? So you should be clear on these concepts. It's very important because when you face real-time patients, these are little things which matter. Right? Do you give him the right perspective? Okay. Anything else, Jitender? Please ask him some questions. We need to, we are almost done. This was, a male person with, this was a male person with lupus. Yes. Okay. And so what is the sex ratio? As compared to females, what is the incidence of lupus? In for head, female is to one, male is 9 is to 1, but for lupus, there is no uh, gender as uh, it occurs. Okay. And uh, suppose you have 100 lupus patients. Then out of all these lupus patients, how many of these uh, would be having kidney diseases? Uh, 40 to 50 percent will develop lupus nephritis over a period of time. And out of all these kidney patients yeah. with lupus, lupus patients with kidney diseases, how many of them will have proteinuria? The proteinuria is present in all, uh, all the lupus patients. Of all the lupus patients with okay. renal involvement, how many of the patients will be having this proteinuria? 90 to 100% will have protein. Almost all of them. All and out of all these patients with proteinuria, how many of them will be having nephrotic range proteinuria? 40 to 50% will have nephrotic protein. That's yes, good. And how many of them would be having macroscopic hematuria? Around 3%, sir. 
सबको हो गया I I don't know. I can never remember these figures. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. think think we are done. I'm at 750. So, again, Ashish, I think you need to, if I was to give you a parting advice right now, uh, you need to organize your history better. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. I summarized it for you. It was a more comprehensive summary. I may have gone too fast. but it was a more comprehensive summary right so when you say a summary you don't need to go into details of symptoms you don't need to go into details of treatment so you summary is a summary you know even this long a patient history can be summarized into this much this can also become this much it's it's kind of an art and a science both okay so you need to work on your i think present more cases wherever you can do within your hospital because this forum is one it comes once in these 3 years i believe with the current number of students you definitely and this is a well prepared history mind it right so what when you have to do the same thing in 40 minutes you have to figure out the summary process it, it in your head and do the examination and present it right so all that will need to get finished in at best an hour and that is what you're going to do all your life in opd as well so you must kind of do more presentation to your consultants to your colleague post graduates maybe one year senior one year junior may also do so get more comprehensive and you need to kind of process it better in your head and don't again as a third year i would imagine you know how to follow recovery in a dialysis dependent patient first thing would be recovery in renal function proteinuria microscopic hematuria was of the junk heavy in sab ki value tabhi hai jab kidney function aayega how do i care how much is the proteinuria if i have no kidney function if i have no urine output you understand so you should process it in your own head and cut out the junk it's very important to cut out the junk the patient may keep giving you loads of junk you have to push it out okay so i think that's the message i want to give you so take more histories in opd in ward present them ex tempo don't give yourself too much of processing time that's how you will learn to process it faster and faster and faster and hopefully properly okay close gyan thank you all right any anyone else please feel free to say comments ma'am good evening ma'am questions yeah sure is this ramya yeah ma'am no. yeah it sounded like you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. please give some input here yeah. Ma'am, I just wanted to know, like uh, in lupus patient, uh, when we compare to other uh, glomerular disorders or other transplant patients, that things we do differently is we look at the anti-phospholipid antibodies. Yeah. Um, was it done in this patient, and was there any anticoagulation given? I wanted to know that. And secondly, I wanted to know how was the induction immunosuppression uh, given in this patient because he has received a lot of immunosuppression before also. Cyclophosphamide was given in. Um, i'm like uh, two doses every month types so i wanted to just know what was the protocol used for induction and uh, maintenance what would i use or what did ashish use no ma uh, what what uh, what, what did was ashish... used factually yeah yeah ma so this patient uh, though ashish should answer this this patient got standard he got some atg i believe he got some expensive injections I, that's what he said atg graflon what did he get ha huh? basilexin simulect oh he got simulect he got simulect and regarding anticoagulation if something was given and if so it was apla done before transplant apla antibodies were negative ma'am uh, so, so the, uh, yeah so not one one point is ramya not everyone has apla antibodies so before transplant we can uh, look for a hypercoagulable state by screening for all these if there is nothing 
uh, I guess there is no need to anticoagulate such a person. Okay, ma'am. Right. And again, uh, even if this patient, let's say two years ago or whenever he started off, one, there are no thrombotic episodes. Two, apply activity would also die down with lupus, I would imagine. When lupus dies down, the activity of the disease dies down. Even these antibodies may die down. Okay. So that would that's something else you may keep in your mind. I mean, not be over scared about thrombosis, I would imagine. Right? Okay. Does that answer your question, Ramya? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else, please? I see he needs to understand that uh, in look at the psychology of examiner. When you are in exam, he makes up his mind within five minutes of your presentation. So as ma'am was saying, within five minutes, imagine, just remember how she was explaining the case to Dr. Kain Singh. So you have to make him believe that you are very clear in your diagnosis and you have examined the patient. Already within five minutes, you are confused that you are confused. Basically, in a case, this may be a trap. You can go anywhere. But this could also be an opportunity. Your area is the same area where your command is. For example, you have command on lupus. So, direct the lupus to the lupus. If you say that you are getting the lupus, you have the command on the transplant. So, quickly come down to the transplant story. So, you can take advantage of the examiner. You can lead him where you want him to go. But if you do this present, as you have done it, so, the whole thing is passed for one and a half hours and I think not much was discussed about the patient. So, as Madam told, this is an art and you need to master that art to pass through the exam. Exam is not. I think in my life, this is what we have to do. The patient will ask you. The patient needs to be clear for the patient. So, we have to develop a thought process. There is nothing else. So, practice. So, practice. I think see more and more, present more and more, and you learn it. Everything can be learned. So be positive, do some more practice, right? Shalom. So we call it a close then. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Ashish. Thank you, Jitendra. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, faculty. Thank you, Buneet. Thank you, sir.